Greetings, world, and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit. This is episode 18, and I'm Darina Shine. I thank you so much for those who are far and near. This is specifically to my Youngstown, Ohio uh, connections, and I thank you so much for being a part of the Youngstown Community Center and the Scales to Success LLC business project. So before we get into the topic today, it's a really good topic. We're talking about emotional leaders. Um, I want to say that we are going to be having a community birthday party that involves all of community members who are born in the month of May. Now, if you are a Taurus at the early beginning parts of May 1st, all the way to, you know, Gemini to the 21st, all the way to the 30th of, of May. Is it 30 days or 31 days? Um, well, you guys know what I'm saying. The end of the month of May, from the beginning to the end, you are invited to the birthday party. I would ask that you just call and say, yes, I will be attending. So then that way we can know um, what size cake to purchase and to uh, have all the activities ready for you for your day. It will be May 20th to celebrate all community May birthdays. So yes, um, you can call me at 330-956-0511 and leave a voicemail. Also, uh, Mother's Day event, May 13th, is coming up. We are kind of closing that um, RSVP on May the 8th. So you have until that time. So we'll know how many people are going to be there. So we can provide the um, lunch for you. We're going to have baked chicken, mashed potatoes, and green beans. So um that's something that uh, we're doing for our mothers. The cost is $10 a donation in order to um, provide some of the gifts and some of the items that we're going to be giving out. And the birthday cost is $3 if you would like to donate to the community center. Uh, members, they pay a $25 a month membership fee. They get in for free. Okay. Now, hmm, what do I want to talk about today when it involves the um, emotional leader? There are going to be times in the nonprofit sector we are going to encounter volunteers, staff members, uh, um, employees, contractors. We're going to we're going to encounter them as leaders and it's going to be a time where you're going to connect with everyone's character and personality. And then there's going to be a time where you're going to have to be the boss and you're going to have to make the conscious decisions of what will work and what will not work for your organization. This is a hard thing to do in leadership. Because one thing about an emotional leader, according to the Forbes um, Business Journal, um, people, and I use the emotional intelligent leader as the position in which I'm in, because that's what I, I did one of those exams, those tests, and that's what I fall under, the emotional intelligent leader. So that is why I'm directing this to the emotional intelligent leader. So these leaders are highly in tune with the states of others. It's kind of like, you know, the intuitive perspective of seeing things before they actually occur. And then stepping in before and making the decision of how you're going to handle it. Either way it goes, you know, so it's not like you're judging. It's not like you are putting people on a pedestal 
and then pulling the pedestal from under them. It is the action that is being performed that you are seeing go down before your eyes or going up before your eyes so you can know how you're going to reward an individual for being outstanding, how you're going to reward an individual for the baby steps that they're taking and the humility that they have in the process, and then how you're going to handle people who are, you know, not doing their part, not holding their weight, coming in for other reasons, coming in for other um, agendas. So you have to understand where people are coming from. And I do, as a leader in nonprofit work, I do take into account the levels of education. I take into the account um, the expectation of what you should know as a basic business leader in the field of your passion. The thing that you value the most inside of your title, I think the basics should be known. So uh, it's not about judgment, it's about expectation. So again, you know, if you're, um, if you've worked with emotional intelligent leaders, you're going to find out that they're going to ask questions like, how you doing? What's going on? They're going to be more personal, Okay. They genuinely, they genuinely want to know, according to this art article, they want to know what you're experiencing and what's really going on so they can help identify how to support you. Because everyone, especially business developer, developers, the goal is to develop business. So you're actually unsuccessful when you don't put everything into your client. <laughs> if you fail to support them and if they don't come to an area where they are better than they were when you first met them, then you're not doing business development. You're doing something else. See, there's a difference between being a personal um, person that just wants to get into people's business to gossip about their lives versus someone who really is an emotional leader that the goal is to maintain and make sure that this individual is successful. And emotionally intelligent leaders, according to this Forbes article, says that they pay attention to both what's said and what's unsaid. The actions speak loud to the emotional leader, and I do agree with that. See, these leaders are skilled in perceiving what others are experiencing. They pick up on, you know, why they're, they're trying to piece together a puzzle to see what is on the mindset of this individual, to see how they're going to do what they do. Everything must synthesize. It's called, there was a great word that came out about maybe 10 years ago, and it was called synergy. And sometimes, and then right after that term came narcissism. So the synergy is the synchronicity of what it is you're feeling versus what it is you're doing and saying. And then the epiphany that we receive as emotional leaders tell us what's really going on. We don't pay attention to the regular things. We pay more attention to the irregular things. So when they happen, we're right on it. We're on it. Okay, we're looking for um, not jumping to conclusions. No, we're looking for the guideline to direct us in maintaining and working with this person on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Not putting people in a rigidity, bureaucratic experience. No. But it's also about handling business as well. And not taking things personal is um, it's hard for an emotional leader, okay? 
Emotional intelligent leaders also maintain a positive climate. So when there's drama and there's chaos, then something is off kilter. Something is off. And understanding the role they play, shaping the culture of the team is very important. They're encouraging. Emotional leaders are encouraging. They're critical to performance. They are decision makers. They're conflict resolution specialists. And group dynamic um, is the key because the goal is to make sure and maintain that these individuals come out on top to be the best of the best, okay? So the culture is open where people are unafraid to make mistakes. Yeah, okay, this is what I need to do. This is how we need to handle them. And the way that a person hears and learns visually, auditory, um, you know, touching, uh, you know, the processes of, of growing their business and putting the action into it is the focal point. So when you hear an emotional leader say something like, okay, you need to stay focused and, and remain in your lane, that's not a disrespect. What it is, is a counter intuitive understanding that you are over here, honey, you need to be right here. And if we're here to create body butters, then you shouldn't be whipping together Cool Whip. You know, you should be creating the coconut oil, the lime, the lemon, the whatever you're doing. And you need to be staying focused in that lane. You shouldn't be making barbecue sauce over here. You should be focused on the, the general term and the reasons for your existence in being where you are in your business. This is what the article is saying. And it's also saying that being open, reinforcing trust and connection, you know, that's it. That's the key. And then, you know, a lot of people will come in and talk a little bit about what they're experiencing. Yeah, you be a part of that. You hear it. And what I do is I, I archive it in my mental archive. And then when it's necessary, when it comes up, I say, ah, that's the reason why this is happening because that took place. Or I remember them saying this. I remember them saying that. So conversation is very vital in emotional leaders. They're going to be very conversational. You're not going to be able to hide things long with an emotionally intelligent leader because they're rich in emotional a vocabulary. They're going to get it out of you. Um, these leaders understand the complexity of emotion, what causes the emotion to occur and why people respond the way that they do. You know, it's a, a very difficult place to be as an emotional leader in a business or a nonprofit or for-profit company, whatever you're doing. It's vitally difficult when you have to say goodbye to those people you wanted to empower. It's not a weakness. It's not a detachment. It's not a void. It is, however, a... Because you're going to meet someone else that it, you're going to be able to help. It's a revolving door, okay? People come, people go, people get in. They feel that they want to do this. And then before you know it, they're burnt out um, because it is extreme. Because it is something that everyone who, anyone who has not gone through it will think that this is hard. But everyone who has succeeded in business has always gone this route. They've always stayed consistent. They've always stayed motivated. They've always had that self analysis within them to say that this is what I can do because this is what I do, <laughs> you know? No one can take that away. So research involving um, these scans of emotional leaders has found that simply labeling an emotional, an emotion disrupts the brain's uh, 
ability to understand that something is taking place. And so events began to happen and you, you didn't see it coming. I've been there before where I was helping. I remember when I first started my skills to success LLC business, my goal was to go out in the world and tell everybody about this because I don't think they knew because poverty existed. And all of a sudden I had this epiphany in this world that obviously was in my own little bubble because everyone else knew what I was talking about. You can succeed. You can start your own business doing A, B, and C, the very thing you're doing. Oh, yeah, okay. But I was going to the wrong group of people. I was going to the prostitute who knew exactly what she was doing. She was running her own passion. That was the thing that she chose to do. What do I look like going out there telling a prostitute, this is what you need to do. You can start a business doing this instead of standing on the street corners all day. When I, I, I go into the homeless, telling them, hey, this is what you can do. Half of those homeless individuals are homeless by choice. Because they don't want to follow the rules of society. So they want to do things on their own terms. So when you do things on your own terms, you set your own rules. So that's being an entrepreneur. You're handling your money the way you choose to. Panhandlers, another thing. I'm going talking to them, telling them about the lifestyle in which they need to. Oh my God, you could be a, you know, you could do things to help bring, you know, uh, uh, positivity to people so we can teach them that they can get a job instead of panhandling. But guess what, lady? This is what they're looking at me, you know, now years later, I see. Guess what, lady? I'm probably making more money than you in a day. So go and take your little whatever you're doing on over there. <laughs> you know, so in this Chronicles, I'm talking about specifically emotional leaders and how to handle those emotional times. When people come to you with their emotional downfalls, um, sometimes they'll come to you with depression. Sometimes they'll come to you with, because misery loves company. So if a person comes to take your, your energy, you have to know how to handle that, to keep your energy. It's very powerful. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about keeping the energy, it is not about being negative. I heard someone say, oh, I came to visit you today and someone yelled at me and said, we're closed. Well, yeah, if my maintenance men are working and they're, it's hot outside and they're maybe needing a drink of water. I haven't gotten them water yet. I'm getting ready to take it out there and you come right before that. Please don't take it personal when people are doing their job. You're walking into our world and our world is moving consistently. You know, at the Youngstown Community Center. So when you show up, that's why I tell people call to make a, um, a schedule, you know, call in to, you know, schedule a meeting with me. So then that way you're not just roaming around and while things are taking place and no one has the time to stop and greet you in a successful way because we didn't know you were showing up. And if you do, please be mindful that things are really and truly taking place at YCC. Whether it's a business phone call um, entrepreneur building, whether it's um, sitting about COVID talks, whether it's communicating about the next event, whether it's putting together um, program pamphlets or letters or anything. It, it, it could be a million things that could be being done. We could be putting together a cooking class We because that's what we do. That's why we cook so much. We could be doing a lot of different things and it is vitally important to let it be known that YCC is not a, a, a place where 
we're just mean and everything is happening. It's just the way people take. And one thing I'm learning about the city in which we live in, people take things very, very personal. And I did it too. I did it too until I'm recently coming to the understanding that it is not all about me. When I walk up there, it's not like all eyes on me. Tupac is not singing the the all eyes on me, you know what I mean? As you're walking up the um, corridor, it is that we need to be mindful that many things are going on. And that's the emotional leader's intellect speaking now. So put yourself in a position of where we are and then make the decision. Are we just mean, cruel, and evil? Or are we really productively putting our time to good use? And if we're not scheduled, if there is no schedule, we don't know where we're going to be when that doorbell rings. So kind of be a little mindful of that when you're entering and coming through. But other than that, we have a smile. We have a welcome. Welcome to the Youngstown Community Center. This is your community center. You know, ideas are being built here. You know, connections are being made here. You know, there's a lot of good things going on. So as an emotional leader, I want to just say that um, for those, especially when we have to end agreements and when we have to end, um, when we have to thank people for being a part of YCC, but the fit just isn't right. Um, I like to post certain things as a reminder to how I've grown from the east, the equation, the situation. So then that way people can truly and genuinely see what took place instead of what others may say about what took place. Because on the other end of it, the receiving end, nobody wants to be detached from, you know, um, something that they had a passion for that maybe didn't work out. No one wants to be that other on that other side. But all those things make us greater later, let me tell you. I remember um, when I was about 23 or 24, I had um, went into the Job and Family Services Welfare Office and I asked to apply for this thing called food stamps. And it was amazing because I heard that you could get, you know, help with your medical, you can get actual cash benefits. I was working at Apple's grocery store in the Lincoln Nose Plaza on the east side of Youngstown, Ohio. And I was, I think, five months pregnant, four months pregnant. They said, oh, yeah, you can go and apply for all this. So I went down and applied, right? Well, when they looked at my income and they looked at that I was still staying at home with my mom and they looked at her income I was like $7 over the income of a family of the amount of people that lived in the home, $7. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, so because of $7, I may have to pay for my own pregnancy, birth, and all that. And come to find out, you know... um, that made me so much greater later because I no longer depended on social service agencies to make the situation happen for me. Um, yes, after a while, they decided that um, when I no longer was working and I was on my um, sick leave, they um, then allowed me to apply and then I, I was able to receive you know, um, the food stamp assistance so that I could feed my, my twins who one of them, my son, he needed a formula that was like $23, um, for six cans. 
I mean, it was ridiculously crazy because he needed a lot of nutrients in it, okay, in him. So anyway, the point is that I could have took that personal and said, oh, woe is me. You're hating on me. You're you're stopping me from being successful. And now I'm going to be out. No, I didn't do all that. What I did was I took my marbles and I went over there and I sat down. And back in the day, they didn't call it meditation. They called it prayer. I started praying. And before you know it, I went back to work. I had more hours to promote for work. And yes, my mother and my grandmother, God bless them. They helped me tremendously with my child, my children. And with that, I was able to succeed. So to this day, I no longer look to public agencies. I mean, even to this day, I'm looking for an agency to help me with my roof. And I've been qualified and I'm waiting for three. I've waited almost two and a half years and I'm still waiting. And guess what? I'm about to, by the time <laughs> it's it's all said and done, we're going to see. Should I have believed in me or should I have believed in, in this social agency? So sometimes we have to get a little bit tougher skin, something that I did not like to do. I did not want to do, but I had to do. And let me tell you, it made me greater later. And my kid's father always told me that. You're going to be greater later. Didn't understand what that meant, but I do now, you know as the, the hierophant in the seat. So what I want to say is I thank you all for listening to the Chronicles of a Nonprofit. I'm not going to be on here too much longer. I thank you for being consistent. I thank you for the phone calls, the um, subscriptions. And yes, uh, I have a dual, I have a dual part on this channel. One is to help the appeal of Robert Sylvester Kelly, aka R. Kelly. And then and that's a social agenda. And then one is to work on the chronicles of a nonprofit, which is where I'm at on this channel podcast. So if you see these uh chronicles, you know that that's not talking about Robert Sylvester Kelly, it is specifically talking about nonprofit and the use of, you know, promoting business. So you make the choice. Um, <clears throat> but thank you for liking and subscribing. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for, and I'm going to start um, as we move forward through this uh, premiere, I'm going to start to take business questions for nonprofits. So if you have one, hit me up in the Gmail account. Um, uh, let me see. It's scales, S-C-A-L-E-S-T-O, success, S-U-C-C-E-S-S, L-L-C at gmail.com. That's scales to success, L-L-C at gmail.com. And then I'm going to answer some of your questions. I know that um, I may not put them on the air. I may just answer them through email. And as we always have since 06, you know, uh, Emerald Mystery Radio was our first channel that we promoted here on air when we didn't even know how to use the microphone. But we kept going. We kept moving. So now we're here. So thank you so much for being consistent. Stay consistent. Stay consistent through whatever you're going through, whatever the situations are, whatever emotional situations you're going through, you know, keep fighting every day for your passion. And eventually you're going to become your greatest version, you know. Um, shout out to my brother. <laughs> um, so, so yes, come on. You know, call me if you want to, if you have an idea, no matter how small you think it is, no matter how big you think it is, give me a call. Let's see what we can do. Because again, I started Scales to Success, a, a, a corporation that is now connected to 50 nonprofits all over the world. And, and it, in its first year made $50,000. Um, 
now we are giving more. So we, you know, we, we do what we can, um, post pandemic. So I think this is a great lucrative, um, opportunity to help inspire others to move through their passions from just experience. And yeah, so give me a call. Let's see what we can help you do, um, to support you. And believe me, you're going to get all the knowledge, both legally, emotionally, and um, inspirationally that you can get from anyone, anyone, anywhere. Because this is the God-given passion that man tried to destroy. Um, but God said, no, we're going to keep doing this. And this is why I'm back. All right, peace. <clears throat> Stay consistent. Thank you for watching Chronicles of a Nonprofit and episode 18. And we hope to see you soon. Peace.